Live in Western Oregon, this is NBC 16 News at 11. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Joyce Kim. A Coquille High School student's threats against teachers and staff forced local police to step in for an intervention. Coquille City Police say Sunday night they were informed by a concerned parent of threats made by the student against multiple school staff members. Sergeant Doug Miller says the student, who is believed to be a sophomore at the school, shared his plan with one student and that student shared it with a group of other students. Staff members were notified and the student was detained at his home. The officer on the scene decided mental health services services were necessary. The officer at the time um, believed that most appropriate uh, course of action was going to be with the uh, mental health assessment team. Uh, they did a uh, director's hold on the uh, on the student and that student was transported to a uh, Bay Area's hospital for care and assistance. Miller says Coos County's mobile response team conducted the initial mental health assessment on the student. The high school did open as scheduled on Monday. But as we move on to our education news, the McKenzie School District closed today because of a lack of bus drivers. The school district has 175 students, three bus routes, and three licensed drivers. However, due to the district's lack of resources, there's little flexibility. We just had uh, one too many folks unable to make it into to work today. We, we weren't able to run our usual amount of routes. We, uh, we can usually combine one one or two routes, but today we weren't able to logistically pull it off. It says hiring bus drivers has been challenging even before the pandemic. Since the wildfires back in 2020, filling the position has been difficult because of the limited housing availability for new workers. The school district is currently looking for new drivers and offering a $1,200 hiring bonus. As for tomorrow, the superintendent says one of the drivers will be returning to work to get the kids back to school. And a $425 million gift led to the University of Oregon launching the Balmer Institute for Children's Behavioral Health, which is a program to focus on mental and behavioral health initiatives in K-12 schools. Kirsten Lindquist went to campus to see what the Portland-based institute will look like. A new national model for children's behavioral and mental health care is being launched right here at the University of Oregon. I spoke with educators to see what the institute plans to accomplish. And our state needs help. And the University of Oregon, we are uniquely capable of providing that help. The Balmer Institute for Children's Behavioral Health. And that's the mission of the Balmer Institute for Children's Behavioral Health at the University of Oregon, developing new undergraduate and certificate programs and delivering science-based early detection, prevention, and treatment strategies directly to K-12 children and their families. Our early discussions uh, have a distinct focus on promotion and prevention uh, in addition to care. This is all possible thanks to a more than $425 million gift from Connie and Steve Ballmer. Connie, a U of O grad, and Steve, owner of the LA Clippers. Early goals of the program include graduating at least 200 practitioners a year to address the needs of Oregon's public schools, starting with Portland. The rampant gun violence, the houselessness, the economic insecurities, uh, we, we are witnessing all of those factors, even as we try to teach reading and math and all of the other academics. And the pandemic has only amplified the need for the program. Over half of youth in Oregon who need services, mental and behavioral health services, are not getting the care they need. And not just for children in urban schools. It's important to kind of have a multi-level deployment strategy so that we can really be more nuanced and thoughtful about how we work with those professionals in their contexts. Reporting in Eugene, I'm Kirsten Lindquist. The University of Oregon will also be able to provide scholarships through a $100 million endowment to, quote, graduate a new, diverse, and culturally rich workforce prepared to work directly with those in need. Now, the Eugene Family YMCA made its final payment on a nearly five and a half acre lot that will be home to the new Y with groundbreaking set for July. The land was bought from the 4J School District for a total of $2.85 million, and it's located on the site that was once the home to Roosevelt Middle School. The plan is to open the new facility in December of 2023, and fundraising is still ongoing with the hope of raising $5 million before groundbreaking begins.
move on to take a look at our weather. Here's a live look over Eugene tonight and NBC 16 Chevy Chevalier joins us now in the weather center with the first look at your forecast. Chevy. We're getting some rain. We need the rain, right Joyce? Absolutely for the drought situation. Let's take a look outside now. The roads are wet and that will continue to be the case. Uh, you know, we're, we're not getting heavy downpours, which is good because it's going to continue to rain. They're getting a lot of rain upstream and of some rivers uh, up around, you know, between Seattle and Portland, they're getting a lot of rain. So uh, fortunately, we don't have any advisories, watches, or warnings in our area. Holding on to 54 degrees. Roseburg as well, 53. Coos Bay. Temperatures are going to hang out right around 50 or low 50s for tonight because of the cloud coverage and the rain showers you can see here. A good bit of rain just uh, moved through here, so we are picking up the rain and we definitely need it. So uh, Eugene has uh, picked up uh, what, 0.37, Roseburg 0.12, but we're thinking about uh, two inches, maybe more, hopefully, by the time we get to Thursday morning. And today, oh, a big game changer for wildfires, for lighting, all kinds of stuff. I'll tell you about this. Plus, today's the first day of spring. We'll talk about that too here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Chevy. Moving on to our coronavirus coverage, the OHA reports 741 new cases today and 26 new deaths. This raises the state's death toll to more than 694,000 and raises the death toll to more than 6,600. But covering our news stories tonight, the Devereaux Center in Coos Bay has been searching for a way to expand their offerings for the city's homeless. And now it looks like they found it through a major grant. Our Gold Meadows tells us now the center is putting those much needed funds finally to use. The Devereaux Center, which provides services to the homeless, those with mental illness, and veterans in Coos Bay, is now able to better serve their clients. That's because the center is a recipient of the Coos Community Health Improvement Program grant from Advanced Health, also known as the CHIP grant. The grant covers um, things that we don't normally buy, um, but our clients always need. This includes things like local bus tickets, taxi fare, and replacement birth certificates. Sometimes those things, depending on the state that you were born in, might cost very little, and sometimes they cost a lot. Other items funded by the grant are often overlooked, Johnson says, like detergent to wash clothes at the center, repair services for broken machines due to heavy use, and properly fitting clothing. We generally don't have men's jeans in smaller waist sizes, like 28 to 32, 34, we rarely get those in. So, but that's the size that many of our guys are. So this grant will allow us to um, purchase those items as well. A shipment of those sizes along with belts was just ordered and is en route to the center. Johnson says a component in the grant allows them to work with Easter Seals, an organization that trains senior citizens to rejoin the workforce. The center will host those seniors who will be paid by the Easter Seals. The grant would also allow the center to pay for things like glasses, dental care, and hearing aids for some of those seniors. Johnson says she's seeing the benefits already. Just being able to give people bus tickets so they can get around town is huge. We use the sometimes funds for taxi vouchers to get people somewhere when they need to go expediently. It, they, it makes a difference. You know, being able to have a pair of jeans that fits you instead of a pair of jeans that's sagging. Reporting in Coos Bay, I'm Gold Meadows. The Devereaux Center is open Monday through Wednesday and Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. They offer meals, laundry, and showers to those in need. And businesses in Lane County can get in the spirit ahead of this summer's World Athletics Championships thanks to the creation of business kits. These kits are part of a collaboration between Travel Lane County and Mackenzie Suwon in Springfield, and they offer local companies a variety of apparel and accessories to add to their places of business. Andy Vibora with Travel Lane County says the kits are one of many ideas the nonprofit profit hopes can encourage businesses to get prepared for the summer's big event. We want to give them some tools that are easily accessible and uh, we'll just be able to show our visitors and the local residents that we're all behind this great event coming to Eugene Springfield and the state of Oregon. The e-commerce site officially launched Tuesday and will host three sales windows in March, April and May. Those windows will be open until the 12th of each month. Coming up next on NBC 16 at 11, an exclusive interview from Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's secret bunker. Plus, a preview on President Biden's first State of the Union address. Stay tuned after the break.